from all right uh, so are you struggling with landing your dream job well that's why we're here a very good evening ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the organizing committee i warmly welcome you all to mastering the art uh, to know your industry presented by studpro 5.0 organized by the ieee young professionals sri lanka undoubtedly this evening will be a great opportunity for you all to understand how to bridge that gap between what you learned at the university and what you actually need in the industry also this will be an ideal platform for you to clear your doubts about how to best present yourself with a better understanding into the job area you are stepping into and we hope that you will get the maximum benefit out of it to take a nice onset to the session i would like to invite the vice chair of studpro 5.0 mr sahan edrivira to welcome the gathering uh pamud you can hear me right yeah we can okay uh good evening everyone so first of all i would like to apologize uh i can't turn on the video camera because of any any power issue so on behalf of the organizing committee i warmly welcome you all to stud pro 5.0 know your industry presented by ieee young professionals sri lanka i would like to extend a special welcome mm -hmm. to our speaker today mr hon gunathilaka who will be sharing his know how on reducing the knowledge gap before entering the computing industry thank you mr hon for accepting our invitation and taking the time out of your busy busy schedule to join us also it's my great pleasure to welcome the chairman of the ieee sri lankan section professor pradeep abhigunavarthana and all the executive committee members of the ieee sri lanka section then i would like to welcome the ieee young professional sri lanka chairman mr dammi kumar singh student activities committee chairman mr chamika subhasinghe as well as the sectional student representative mr vidurban last but not least i welcome all the attendees who are here with us today stood for 5.0 a way to bring you a whole variety of workshops and other valuable events to prepare you to put your best foot forward in your future interviews followed by a career fair to help you with uh with the industry giants before we get started i'd like to express my sincere appreciation to you all who generously help us to make this event success i hope that you will be left with something of value for your journey and i wish that you all get the best out of our session I welcome you all once again to the session and hope that you all will have a great time. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Sahan. A small reminder to all of you, the slide link will be shared in the chat box. So if you have any questions, you need any clarifications from our speaker, please drop them in the slide. So without any further delay, let me introduce the guest speaker of today's session. He started as a fresher at 99x and now has around 6 years of experience in full stack development and cloud related services. Throughout his career, he has worked with customers from various regions and domains including Australian, American, German, Norwegian and Swedish with whom he has developed positive relationships. He also holds the title of Microsoft certified solutions developer and is currently a senior tech lead. So I'm extremely honored to welcome Mr. Johan Gunatilaka. Warmly welcome and over to you sir. Yeah. Thank you Pramodhi. So first of all uh, I would like to remind that our industry software industry is one of the most casual industries so we don't call people sir or madam. You can just call me by my name or oh, your kind doesn't matter. So that's something cultural but uh, calling by my name i'm more than happy so any one of you have any problems just raise it to me don't have any gaps and even in my slide deck i tried 
to make it um, as casual as possible so that um, I can show how casual this industry is because I mean, when we go to work also, we don't wear any formals, we can dress anything, but we want like, uh, you have to have an attire which is appropriate, but you're not controlled. So only thing we need is your brain and your knowledge. We won't measure you by your appearance. Okay. Um, before we proceed guys, uh, can I get a quick understanding on uh, what sort of audience we have here? Uh, people who are still in their first year, can you raise your hands? If there are any? Okay, we have few. And uh, second years? Okay, we have two, three people. Then third years? Right. And uh, fourth years? All right. And uh, again, guys, I would like to apologize. I'm looking at my other screen because I'm not in my usual setup. I had to come to Dubai for a company assignment. So I'm actually joining this from Dubai. So I have another laptop connected. That's why I'm looking that way to have a holistic view of what we're seeing. All right, without further ado, uh, try to share my screen. Yep. Can you guys see my screen? Think you can. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. Then uh, I've titled this presentation as uh, "Be the one that industry wants," because um, I have conducted a lot of interviews for freshers and as well as senior people. I still see that uh, there's a gap in uh, what we learn and what the industry expects when it's there. I mean, people who are smart enough, they bridge that gap when they come into industry within a shorter period. But still we see that there are people who are finding it really hard to bridge this gap. So by this presentation, what I'm trying to do is to give you guys a glimpse of what we need. I mean, you guys will understand within an hour. I can't uh, give you guys everything we'll expect, but I'll be touching upon certain areas, which I thought are the most vital ones we seek in the individual when we try to uh, get them joined to the company. So I'll uh, brush through those areas really quickly. I'm trying to uh, finish this presentation as soon as possible. Then get into a discussion with you all not a Q&A session, but a discussion. We will discuss whatever problems you have and I will try to clarify them as much as possible within this period. All right? Okay. So uh, speaking about myself, I've been in industry, been in this industry for like six years. Uh, I joined Nine Time Next as an intern, um, as most of you guys, like uh, who are about to join industry as interns. So in my university, we had to complete our internship in the last semester, that is eighth. So after completing three and a half years of education, I joined the company. Then uh, within uh, four or five months, I was able to uh, become a software engineer there. Then uh, I was able to uh, uh, climb through the ladder uh, within five years. And now I'm a tech lead there, leading a, a team which is uh, working for a Norwegian client. And uh, we have around 30 people in my team. So currently we are working on a uh, lot of Asia, cloud-related technologies and uh, .NET development. And uh, speaking about my uh, background, I'm a Microsoft certified solution developer, which I completed two years back. And uh, I have completed these uh, certifications as well, uh, AWS technical professional and uh, business professional. So uh, those two are kind of cloud-related 
uh, certifications that I completed uh, back in 2019. And uh, if you see this image, this is how I joined the company uh, back in 2016. Now I'm like this. So I hope uh, people who are joining will uh, do not follow this path, but the other things I tell you. Yeah. So uh, giving you a holistic view of what we are going to discuss today. So I'll be touching upon a few technical areas that you uh, can look into and uh, get yourself familiar with and to get an understanding of uh, how you could uh, improve your talent based on those areas. And I'll be giving a few non-technical areas which are really important as, I mean, as important as technical areas, but people uh, don't seem to have uh, an idea on those and uh, people, I mean, many people know of these non-technical areas, which are as vital as technical areas. And as the third part, we'll try to create a discussion, as I told. So we'll uh, clarify whatever questions or uh, problems you're having about the industry or your internship, anything that you can throw to me, I will try to answer it in my best way possible. Yes. So I want to start with this with a question. So uh, what do you guys think? Guys think. So um, is this term engineer is similar to pro, similar to a programmer, or are these two dif two different uh, terms? What's your understanding on these guys? Anyone who would like to answer? We can use the chat box as well. You all can hear me, right? Anyone? All right. I can see a few, but in my other screen, I couldn't see. All right. We have a few answers here. Different. Because engineers try to find best solutions for a problem. Hmm. Genius need to design on non program related tasks. Both are related, but the engineers goes beyond just programming, building solution problem. Yes, really good. So uh, the difference is that uh, back in the days where IT was at its uh, beginning stages, People considered software developers, software engineers as programmers. What they saw was that they were only doing a program or compiling a program, which is written by them and nothing else. But um, with the evaluation of the industry, now we see these two terms, engineer versus a developer. So this is something many people uh, confuse themselves with. So what do you think about this? Are these two related or different? Related? Is it the same? Yes, I see many of you have this understanding also. So that is awesome. So uh, to give you an idea on these guys, like if you take a developer, developer 
is of course a better uh, person i mean better person in terms of technology than a programmer because programmer knows how to write code but if you take a developer developer has more understanding on how things are happening and has a good understanding of the language or the technology but still developer is not involved in a program or a software development life cycle as an engineer if you take an engineer so engineering is a team activity and if you take an engineer he is involved with the complete process not only in development tasks but also in the entire software development life cycle and uh, engineers get together and work on uh, different components and they merge this or integrate these components together and build up a program but if you take a developer it's more sort of a solitary activity and only involved in development aspect like uh, development bug fixing testing those areas developers are not much involved with how the business is going to uh, be involved in the software development and if you take uh, things like requirement gathering and all so developers don't get much of an idea on this but if you take a software engineer engineer will always have a holistic view um, of what's happening and it's more sort of a team activity so that's why we want software engineers not programmers or developers you can be a developer there are very specific developers but developers don't see that uh, holistic idea of a program so my advice to you is when you enter in the industry try to enter the industry as an engineer then with the time you can uh, make yourself an expert developer and get into a specific certain area but try to enter the industry as an engineer i'm not only totally talking about software engineers you can take uh, qa engineer security engineers so try to get involved and uh, have the holistic understanding and try to enter the industry as an engineer okay so uh, i'll be touching upon some uh, technical areas and uh, i guess someone uh, famous might might have said this i couldn't find it but uh, i thought this is something i should share with you guys so uh, if you want to be a good engineer or the best in your team you should love engineering not technologies so back in the days so also now also we see that people argue over technologies just this uh, react angular war going on and uh, java.net things like that are there and we have this uh, linux windows uh, fight so if you are a good or a perfect engineer you should love engineering technology will be only a tool but you should know how to get the things done using technology so you should love engineering not technology because technology is obsolete but engineering doesn't now all right so of course if you want to be a software engineer you should know programming but uh, i'm giving you a few tips so always try to be strong on fundamentals don't try to just rush through and learn things in the uh, technology level but learn the basics so i'll give you a good example and um, when i did an interview uh, like couple of months back i can remember the exact day i asked uh, that person to sort an array so that is something we learn in um, second or third year only method that person knew was this uh, array dot sort method so he could explain what's happening in the uh, in that method so what i'm advising you is try to learn the basics first then try to learn on these uh, things that like a technology or language provide if you just rush through and learn what the language or the technology provides you will never you will never get a chance to touch the basics so if you want to be a good engineer you should be strong on fundamentals and um, always focus on code quality conventions and structure so uh, i mean when in first year you just write everything in a single line a single file but when you mature and uh, learn more and more technologies you learn the structures how to have good quality in your code how to structure the program and there are few conventions that we could use how to have the method naming variables and uh, how meaningful variables should be and this camel case conventions so try to learn those also 
your program will work of course whether you uh, have the code quality or not have the conventions or not have the structure or not your program will work but the thing is when you work in a team so you will be responsible for what you write so that could add a disgrace to your name if you don't have the code quality conventions and code structures in what you write so if you want to be a good developer or good software engineer you should always have the conventions quality and structure in your code and um, when you enter into the industry have a little bit of understanding on this html css and javascript so that is something really basic so we expect them to know this and on top of this have the other things known so this is like a must to have whether you work with uh, desktop apps web apps anything you should learn this and have an understanding on uh, double op principles and functional programming with javascript so double op is really important it's the uh, pillar of uh, everything that you write and uh, in contra we have functional programming which is the opposite of double op that is something we use uh, especially in languages like javascript so this is not much in use in many companies but few still uses this so have an understanding on uh, what's the difference between double op and functional programming and you should be really strong in um, data structures algorithmic parts you couldn't have you can have an idea i think uh, in most universities they teach this in third year so uh, be thorough on these areas algorithms of course you could learn while you are doing the development also but uh, data structure understanding is a must because with these only you will achieve the uh, performance and the security and how um, solid your code is so have an understanding on this and um, have an understanding on design patterns um, i'm like uh, when i'm conducting an interview for a fresher i don't expect them to uh, know everything related to design patterns all the design patterns and uh, everything but if you know few that would be smart that uh, you can show that you are confident and you know things so that is something you could uh, have an understanding on so uh, the tip guys so learning uh, to code is easy if you see uh, there are youtube tutorials and different different tutorial uh, sites that you could uh, learn coding but the thing is people just give up when they come across a bug or a place that you can't get it through so to identify those areas and to make your code work you should be do debugging so what i'm asking you to is uh, have more understanding and practice on debugging that is how you could uh, master your uh, programming or your development skills and um, if you take debugging steps could be different from language to language and from framework to framework but the process is same so what you will see is you will validate the inputs and you will try to uh, have an understanding on what's happening in the process you will try to step uh, through each of the function or a line one by one then you will validate the output that's how you do the basic debug so uh, learn debugging through a single language and master it then you can learn other languages also then guys uh, have an understanding on uh, databases if you take databases there are relational databases and non relational databases so uh, this is something uh, common i see in most of the interviews i conduct people are biased towards a single thing either they are really familiar with relational databases and uh, doesn't care about non relational and uh, some are having more understanding on non relational databases and they don't care about relational databases so that is something you should avoid as a fresher who's going to enter the industry i'm asking you to have an understanding on both of these because selecting a database with this relational low non relational depends on the task you can't apply relational databases to all the programs you write earlier in the days they used to have but there was several uh, several shortcomings that people so that's why they came up with this non relational databases and non relational law also doesn't suit every scenario that you will come across so it's better to have an understanding on both and to master them whenever needed 
So what I'm asking you to like, not to be really thorough on these and to have the best understanding possible, but at least have some understanding on one thing and to master other things. So therefore, I mean, like if you do that, it'll be easier for you to uh, take up a task and learn when you have the basics ready. And guys, uh, a very uh, common thing I see is people doesn't care about indexing or query optimization. When it comes to database level, they just write queries, they don't do indexes. So and uh, in your demo level programs or your uh, campus for second year, third year projects, you don't uh, care much about optimizations or indexing because your maximum you will be dealing with around 1000 records. But uh, to give you an example of what I'm working at the moment, so that's a program which handles around million transactions per day. So in a program like that, indexing and query optimization is the key if you want to achieve the speed that is required. So it's better to have an understanding on this and you can experience on, I mean, look at you experience this when you come to the industry, but at least have the basic understanding and know how, how to do this and um, have the understanding on transactions, asset properties and uh, those things and learn how to do rollbacks and take backups because these are really important when it comes to production level and um, have the basic understanding of like uh, load balancing and other stuff and with rates and sharding concepts. Sharding is basically related to non-relational database. You take Mongo-like stuff, they have that. So have these areas uh, referenced. I'm not asking you to master everything, but you can have understanding and uh, study deep when you get a task. And uh, not knowing how to handle data could end you up in jail. So this is uh, really common. People don't think to be much concerned about database or DB security. But um, are, you, are you guys aware about this concern called uh, GDPR? So uh, in Europe, they are really concerned about privacy of their data. So if you send um, one invoice, which is supposed to be re received by me to another person, they could sue you. So what they will do is they'll uh, sue the developer and send you to jail. And in Sri Lanka also, uh, if you could remember a recent scenario that uh, some of the medical records were deleted and the software developer, I don't, I'm not sure whether he's responsible for that or not, but he ended up in jail. So be more concerned about databases that is really important than you think. And now, uh, this is something really important, guys. You need testing. I mean, test your code, test your work. Because uh, what we see is in your development or the uh, learnings, people tend to avoid this, writing unit tests, integration testing, and um, how to test for the performance and load level testing, how, how your application or the program will work when, when there's huge load coming. So people uh, tend to miss this or avoid this when they do the software development. So that is something you should uh, not do. Testing is very important related to, uh, I mean, uh, very important as much as software development. So if you take these two patterns, press driven development, uh, behavior driven development, these are like uh, terms which you could uh, refer to furthermore, I'm just giving you the topics so that you could uh, read later. So test driven development is like you write the test first, then only you will write the code. So, uh, I mean, when you come to the industry, you will know in certain frameworks, you can just write the test and based on the test, the program will be automatically written from the framework. So there are frameworks like that. For that, you have to have solid tests written so that your code will be tested. So have the understanding and read about this and try to integrate this in your day-to-day uh, -day projects, maybe your second year project, third year project, or a sample project that you're working on. Try to have a test project also assigned to the project that you're working on. And also uh, test won't fail if you don't write it. 
but you could um, end up on a desk for your entire weekend while others are having fun because this is something happened to me in in earlier days like uh, i used the wrong data type uh, i used integer instead of long yeah i would have tested my code but i didn't and uh, that took me around two weeks to fix it was just a name change i just a type change but it took me two weeks to fix so if you if i had the proper test written this wouldn't have happened so i'm giving you a tip early on how to save your weekend from your work and guys uh, this is also really important when it comes to uh, proper software development and working in a team so in our university days we are more concerned about getting the code ready and uh, doing the demo or taking the marks but uh, when you work in a team in a company there may be thousands of developers working on the same code base so it's really important to know how to version control and source control uh, so what we basically use is git now uh, this svn svn is obsolete so basically we use git so there are a few basics that you need to learn based on how to uh, merge your code and to take pulls and how to version and how to branch and all. So you could learn this source controlling basics. If you just uh, search for git commands and there are proper uh, tutorials as well and some practice tests you could work on. So uh, you can try working with this. And um, what I'm advising you guys is that uh, even senior developers I have met, like they don't know what's happening in behind. So there are commands like rebase, then um, commit stashing and all. They can do, they will do it when they, whenever they are asked to, but they don't know what's happening in the background. So I think it's better if you can know what's happening in the background as well. That way you will be avoiding the troubles which are coming for you. And uh, just try a terminal also for fun. So there are many UI tools that, I mean, very good UI tools, but try a terminal also so that you'll, you'll be practicing that too, because there are a few scenarios that you might not get the luxury of working with a UI related tool. So better to know the terminal as well. And uh, as I told, like many engineers know how to push and pull. So I have met uh, several people. What they do is if the uh, commit history goes south, so what they do is they delete the project and take a new code. That's how they will do. So you can see in their desktop, they have a project one, project one, stashed one, one dash two. Likewise, there'll be thousands of pulls from the same project because just because they messed up a commit history or a match. So try to uh, learn this. Someone uh, raised their hand. Rukant uh, in the industry. For any IT domain, we apply WP software design patterns and best practices using Java JS, .NET, etc. Yes, I will take this question uh, in the discussion level, Rukant. Hope it's okay with you. Yeah, so uh, related to cloud. Um, so again, I'm asking you to learn the basics. People uh, try to start from a, a bigger level always, but uh, don't do that. Learn the basics first, then try to build up your knowledge on top of that. What I'm asking, I mean, in every area, I'm asking you to learn the basics. Because in a in an interview, if you if you see an interview, maybe in most of the interviews, maybe I can get I can't guarantee for other people, but for the interviews I do and my company do, we test for the basics. So 
So what we really and thoroughly believe is that if you're strong on basics and you know how, if you know how things are working, you can learn other things if you have the best attitude. But uh, if you know only the top areas and are, is not strong on the basics, you are really subtle and there's a higher chance that you could fail when the correct pressure is given to you. So be thorough on the basics, have your basement or the fundamentals in a solid level so that you, so that you can build on top of that rather than knowing the things and avoiding the basics. And uh, my advice is guys, try to stick to a single provider. If you take uh, AWS and Asia are the most uh, common uh, cloud service providers at the moment. There's uh, GCP as well, Google Cloud Platform, but uh, in Sri Lanka, if you take the uh, percentage, uh, many are still with Asia and uh, AWS. So try to stick to a single provider. What I'm asking is that in an interview or in a company um, test, what they will see is how strong your basics are and what's your understanding on a particular cloud provider. If you take uh, job adverts also, you can see they test you for a single provider because from the experience, we know that if you know the basics and you know how a single provider is giving you the solutions, it's easier for you to migrate your knowledge from one provider to the other. If you take AWS and Asia, the service names and other things could change. There will be few, few changes, but you can migrate your knowledge from one provider to another really easily rather than trying to learn both. So my advice is try to stick to a single provider and learn the basics and try to master that. Then whenever the chance is given and you are required, you could migrate the knowledge. And uh, another thing is try to learn and think on cloud. So it's like uh, give, I mean, think about these microservices and how you could integrate these services, whichever provider that you have stick to will provide these services. So if you take, uh, you can uh, think how these uh, API gateways and microservices like services will work and uh, how they will provide you the uh, infrastructure. So thinking on cloud is really important. So for that, what you have to do is you have to know the basics and uh, learn with what are the services that, is, that are provided by your provider. Then try to think on cloud. And um, it's better to have some networking knowledge as well. That is not a must. But if you have some understanding on this, uh, how uh, seven layers are working and uh, these TCP IP layers and how uh, cloud, I mean, uh, cloud networks work, and in basics also, we have these VPNs and uh, virtual private clouds. So you can have an understanding on this and to learn basics of networking. I'm not asking you to master this. You can have the basic understanding that will be really helpful when working with cloud and DevOps. So uh, a common myth is that guys, that you need dollars a lot of or a lot of money to work with cloud and to have experience. So that is not the case. If you take uh, AWS and Asia, they have these free trials. And for many universities, they have given some subscriptions that you could use. And uh, also for the uh, student level or non-production levels, they have uh, good resources that you could try and work on and you don't have to pay a single penny. And um, I will give you a good example, which happened to me personally back in 2016. So I was working with a virtual machine. We call them EC2 in uh, AWS. So I couldn't uh, turn this off. I can remember what happened. I was charged some dollars. Back then it was around $100, but it was a very big amount for me. So what I did was I wrote them an email saying that I'm a student. I worked on this. This is a non-production system that I'm working on. And uh, I made a mistake and this happened they return me that money within three days. So likewise, they are really happy if the students are coming to their platforms and learning something. So try to work on this and uh, get the maximum out of your 
edu, edu domains and ac domains and use the free subscription and to learn these Yeah, there's another problem. Uh, what programming language that you prefer to use in work in the industry? So I'll answer these uh, in the discussion level uh, moment. So I'll uh, touch these basics first so that you can have any idea. Yeah, and uh, security is one of the uh, very um, important areas when you uh, do the development and people, uh, I mean, especially freshers don't think uh, how to secure their code. So what they basically do is they uh, learn a bit of hashing and add uh, hash passwords, and they think that their program is secured, but it's not. If you take uh, modern day, uh, development uh, projects, you can see, I mean, uh, if you take a production system up, you can see how many malfunction or uh, phishing requests are coming for that uh, API. And uh, you are never safe online. Like there'll be so much of uh, attackers trying to attack your uh, system and uh, learn like, uh, I'm asking you to learn a bit of what sort of threats that you could uh, be uh, attacked with. There's a uh, XWS for site scripting and phishing attacks could be there, different uh, DOS attacks. There are certain things that you would look into. Learn these things and uh, prepare yourself. At least knowing this will make you more, uh, make yourself more preventive than trying to firefight when a scenario comes. And uh, the really important thing is do not only rely on defaults. So uh, if you take uh, programming languages back then had a lot of uh, faults that the, I mean, most of the developers were aware of. So it's really common in dark web and all, you could uh, get the exploited areas in a certain language. So if you get exposed that you're using this version of this program, so you can find several uh, exploited places or the code snippet in, this, in that program. So your program is always vulnerable if only if you are relying on the defaults. So always try to be accountable for what you're doing and try to have a basic security understanding and a test. So if you can add a text box, just add a C. I mean, like if you have a, we'll say a contact me pro, uh, page, you can try adding a script to a text box and see what will happen. So there are certain things that uh, people are doing. They try to delete data, they try to query data and uh, sometimes they want to take the system offline likewise. So uh, at least be accountable for what you're writing, at least for your part, if you can't be accountable for the entire system. And um, last but not least, prevention is way better than QO. So we have seen people uh, firefighting and we have seen even people losing their jobs because of a malfunction code they have written because not like in, um, university days, when you are working with a customer code, it has a value. Every piece of data has a value because it's not only the money which matters, data is the new goal nowadays. So uh, you are never on, safe online. And many fishers think that only banking systems are attacked. So as I told, data is the new goal. I mean, uh, in social media, everything, they are now they are mostly after your data, not after your money. Because if you take your personal data, it's really valuable than what you have in your bank account. So never expect you to be safe because you are not working with a banking system. Yeah. Okay. So uh, a bit on tech, non technical area. I'm trying to uh, go through this as fast as possible, guys, so that we could save some time to have the discussion on. So uh, a few non-technical areas that you could uh, look into. So I was told that uh, there were a few sessions which were related to uh, CV writing and online presence. 
likewise. So I'm not uh, going to touch upon those. So it's really important that you are uh, present on LinkedIn, GitHub, and have a good uh, profile on Stack Overflow like uh, platforms that you could show off. I mean, um, when your name is given, what they will do is they will try to do a Google search and see what are the articles or anything that is coming under your name. And uh, your LinkedIn profile, I would say that's the most important one. So have that ready and try to write. Oh, nowadays, people are doing YouTube videos also. It doesn't matter that uh, your content is, uh, you might think that it's really sentimental or like that. It's really primary. It doesn't matter. Only thing you want to have is that show that what you know. You don't have to know the everything. I mean, people are not expecting you to know everything or the things that uh, people couldn't solve. Showing off what you know is more than enough. So try to do that. Have a good online presence. And uh, so in terms of uh, joining a company, so uh, my advice for you is to think globally. Because if you join a software company, you could be working in any part of the world. Maybe in Sri Lanka, you will be connected to any part of the world. Now it's a global village, guys. I mean, like um, you can't find a project which is only scoped to a single country or a single area. It's global now. So try to think globally every time to have your mindset uh, ready for that. You can, uh, I mean, when I told that this is my team, actually, when I told them I'm doing a presentation today, so they wanted to be included in a slide. So I read them also. So uh, these are the uh, six soft skills that I wanted to highlight because as I told, uh, there were a few sessions for you guys, I think, related to LinkedIn, CV writing and all. So these are a few uh, soft skills that I want to highlight. Um, have the empathy. I would say that is the most important one because having empathy will make you uh, a better engineer because knowing the mindset of the person that you are going to cater is really important to serve him. If you know your customer only, you can serve him better. So have a good empathy and emotions, emotional intelligence, because you'll be working in a dynamic team. There'll be uh, people from different genders, different age groups, different family backgrounds, and different regions, different countries, different languages, you name it. All the diversity you need will be there in a team, when you join a team. So have your emotional intelligence at a higher level. And uh, from nowadays, guys, regardless whether you are in the first year or the first year, try to be independent on what you're doing. In the industry, there won't be any teachers. Only mentors will be there. They'll be mentoring you the path, but you have to go in that path, paving the way forward alone. So this is really important. Try to be independent as possible rather than depending on a person to guide you. There'll be mentors, but not teachers. And communication. So this is uh, one of the areas I won't touch really badly because people think having good English or knowing the vocabulary is the key of communicating. No, I would say it's not. Because as Sri Lankans, many of us, um, I can work for everyone, but at least for me, I'm not a native speaker. My mother tongue is English. So um, I learned English just to communicate my mind. Still, I'm thinking in single. So likewise, having communication, a good communication is not about the language. It's about the way you express yourself. So your communication always have to be clear and concise up to the point. And within the years, you can improve your vocabulary. And um, one thing to highlight is we are entering a technical industry. Okay. So if I'm to explain about a program in Sinhala, Tamil, Hindi, English, or anything, I'll be using the keywords of the program, not what is there in my language. So don't uh, have this misconception. I mean, I have seen people going backwards because they think their English is not good. It's not. You can improve your English. Um, I'm telling that is important, but 
do not limit yourself if you are bad in i mean if you are not good in english you can improve that but what you want is a good communication so have try to have your communication and uh, and have it in a way which is more clear and concise and this presentation is also a way of communicating what i wanted to communicate was that with a presentation like this is we are in a more casual industry not a formalized one that's why i use a superhero concept in this in my presentation because i wanted to show you guys that it's one of the most casual industries you could join so that is also a way of communicating so it's not only about the language and uh, attitude guys so having a positive attitude will take you a long way because i have seen people who are really i would say one of the best technical developers or the engineers i have met but i rejected them in interviews i rejected especially i mean only because of the attitude regardless of how good you are if you can't work in a team or if you don't have the positive or the correct attitude you can't work with the team so this is really important so try to shape up your attitude to be more friendly and positive thinking and to take challenges and to achieve them and last but not least try to have attention to detail for what you are working if you are listening to someone listen to them first and try to understand and analyze what they told you and then speak so this is something i also see very commonly in uh, freshers but with time i have seen them um, grooming up to be one of the best people but try to have attention to detail is really important when someone speaks listen to them first try to analyze what they told and then speak back so this is something you could look into and a uh, few tips for you guys as i told try to have a good online presence and uh, try to take maximum usage of uh, free and open source software and student licenses you have so this um, edu.lk and ac.lk these domains are like gold for your university days i wish i had one because i have taken um, a very good use of that but uh, i had to give up on them and now i'm paying for those but uh, try to use those so with this you could get so many offers than you think you can just search online and see every software every program they have they give a student license so that is really important you could take a use of this and uh, what i'm asking is try to learn something new but still finish your technical depths so this is really important guys we have seen people who start new things every week but doesn't complete that and try to move to new thing i'm not asking you not to move but if you are moving forward try to finish what you started then only you will learn it completely and uh, try to learn this uh, join this hackathon and um, there are so many online tests you could be tested for your knowledge on that and uh, try to collect knowledge not certificates it would be ideal if you can get both learn something and get certified for that but um, in an interview we will go through your cv and we will question and see and we will uh, question your knowledge while working also regardless of the certifications you have if you can't work with the technology or with the team it will be useless so try to learn things and get certified if possible but having the certification will not get you a job or will you maybe will make you master so try to learn things and uh, always try to enjoy what you're doing i am i am in this industry because i was passionate about this since i was a kid so since the day i joined this company i haven't worked a single day i was following my passion right now also i'm following my passion even on a weekend i could have just slept but i wanted to share this with you guys because this is my passion so always try to be passionate on what you're doing so that you will enjoy and a uh, few uh, resources guys that you could look into uh related to uh, online courses and technologies there's this uh, udemy coursera plural site egghead.io these sites actually provide good uh, courses content related to specific technologies 
so this you could uh, some will have you will have to pay but uh, i i know few universities have subscriptions also so you could uh, refer to this if you can't get anything out of these four you can just search whatever you need in the youtube also so that is really um, an emerging uh, way of learning things because i have noticed like every company you take microsoft google everyone they have their tutorials now published on uh, youtube as well and really good content creators they won't charge you a single penny they'll be charged from ads and all their revenue model is something like that but there are really good content that you could learn as a fresher so try to work on those areas as well and uh, these two guys roadmap.sh free code camp over it so this is something i wanted to actually highlight and this will be helpful for someone uh, who wants to uh oh wait you can't see my screen right can you see my screen now my browser yeah so this actually is one of the um, best sites i came across recently so this will uh, show you a path how to become a front end developer back end developer devops developer these advantages also they will give you a good path so related to this you can uh, if you say if you want to become a front end developer you can go here and they will show what are the things you should do and what are the things you should learn likewise everything is there so this is really important guys go through this and try to map yourself something similar to this so this give you a good plan a road map for you to build up your knowledge and to become a good developer or a software engineer in a specific area and uh, pre code camp also is something like that um, it gives tutorials and all and will um, help you with your path and uh, just visit this website also 100 days of code so it gives you few challenges that you could work on 100 days a challenge every day and when you complete you can um, tweet with this hashtag uh, 100 days of code you can see on twitter there are so many uh, hashtags related to this i think uh, that's but i have uh, lined up for you and we can take on some question and we can uh, i actually want to make this a discussion not a give and a session so we will discuss whatever the problems you are having related to my presentation or in general about the industry now i'm uh, stopping my screen share so you can raise any questions if you have to Thank you, Mr. Johan, for those insightful words. Um, so you yeah, all right. have such an incredible opportunity to clarify all your doubts from someone who is well versed in the field. So it's time for the Q and A session. Do drop your questions on Slido. The link for that is shared with you on the chat box. We already have some questions, so let's quickly go through the questions. Um, Mr. Yeah. Johan, so I can. Uh, I can tell you the questions, or you can. Yeah, you can uh, read them to me, Pamudi. I think that would be. All right. Uh, so, can person can a person with less coding skills become software project manager in Sri Lanka? What skills does the above role require? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can become. So uh, there are two. I mean, uh, it depends on the company. So if you take a company like ours. we mostly have uh, technical project managers 
so i'm kind of managing a project as a tech lead and uh, we have architects who are managing projects so in a company like ours we don't have this hierarchy uh, level project managers what we do is we take care of the technology as well as team members as well but in the industry there are specific roles related to project management they basically start with uh, not software development but areas like uh, business analyst and uh, now i think there's a specific role called uh, trainee project manager for interns as well that you will be uh, given the required uh, skills to be a project manager and uh, how team management skills would work so uh, skills i would say you need analytical skills that is a must whether you code or not whether you are working with a programming language or not analytical skills are really important and attention to detail and good communication is needed and you will be needing few um, areas like scrum master certifications and not um, so when you learn uh, subjects like agile in your um, undergraduate level you will be uh, learning about few roles in agile teams there are scrum master and uh, different roles so scrum master certifications are important and um, what else so if you take um, a project manager i think it's best to have a uh, good communication and there are a few uh, softwares also that you can learn while you are in the you don't have to have the prior uh, idea on like jira and um, asia devops so these are the areas basically i think what you learn in your uh, undergraduate level is more than enough if you take technical but what you have to develop is your soft skills analytical skills communication and uh, those areas yes so if i'm answer to if i'm to answer that question yes you can become a project manager without coding skills all right thank you for that mr han so uh, yeah. the next question we have is any tips and your opinion on clouding cloud computing and devops yeah i think i answered that in my uh, one of my slides so it's better to uh, learn the basics first uh, about how cloud will work and um, what sort of uh, technologies you'll be needing and stick to a single provider my advice is stick to a single provider whether it's asia aws or gcp try to stick to a single provider and learn about the services that they are providing and how you could build solutions on top of that and then you could migrate your knowledge when the time comes from one service to another and also related to devops so it's uh, basically uh, i will give you a brief on devops because of the time restrictions as well devops is not something alienated to the uh, industry what happened was earlier uh, in a team there used to be uh, different roles there used to be a ba then a software developer then qa uh, engineer then infrastructure engineer then implementation engineer if you take a devops team you don't find this roles it's like basically everyone is doing everything if you take me i work with the customer and get their requirement identified and i do the development and i release them into production and i do the deployment as well with the cloud scripts and all so uh, that is devops so for devops you don't have to uh, additionally learn anything but what you have to do is you have to get the basics of everything to your head so if you are to become a software engineer you can't avoid um, working on tests and all so it's better if you can uh, know each and every area in the software development life cycle then you can become a good devops engineer all right uh, so we have another question what do you recommend to a complete beginner of react and node js based development or net based development and why Mm, yeah so it's um, something different guys so uh, when i joined the industry i only knew uh, .net then after joining the company also only i worked with node but it wasn't uh, much of a hard job what i'm asking is regardless of what you are learning try to have the basics ready and to know how to do things so 
I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, so if the aim is to kill an animal and to get a meat, so it doesn't matter you are carrying a knife or a spear. So what will matter is how we are going to kill that animal and get the meat. So if you take .NET and Node, these two are two different ways. I mean, like if you take uh, this, then uh, threading is different, different techniques are there, and these languages work two different ways. But knowing and mastering one language is enough, and then you could revert yourself. And uh, I can't specifically say Node is easier to learn because I haven't uh, started with Node, I started with .NET, but with some experience, I could tell that learning a Java-based script, a JavaScript-based uh, uh, language is easier, but uh, try to have your basics ready because we have seen people who only start with JavaScript-based uh, languages avoid the basics. We have seen them uh, giving up the basics because you are not prescription. I mean, um, compared to uh, Java and .NET frameworks, JavaScript, you are not much restricted, restricted. So we have seen people giving up on uh, most important things. So my advice is regardless of what you are uh, working on, try to have your basics ready. And uh, if you take the job market, .NET, Java, Node, it doesn't matter what you're learning. All these three backend languages, there are jobs. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so there's another question. Is there, are there free sources to learn cryptography? Uh, so I actually uh, couldn't come across any um, links or uh, tutorials, but um, you can uh, start with basic uh, hashing like algorithms and uh, language specific cryptography is there. And uh, I saw there were a few uh, scholar articles also related to that. But if you take uh, one of the sites I provided, this uh, Udemy or uh, AKIU or Plural site, you can learn the basics from there. Then, uh, if you know the basics, you will know how to create your path on top of a certain area. Then you could master it. Because to general, to get the general idea, there are so many sources available. But if you want to specialize something, then only you will run out of uh, resources. So try to find the general uh, resources first, and to get the basic idea. And if you take these uh, course sites which I gave you guys, like. Uh, you can see what are the ratings and uh, positive feedbacks on these. So try to find the best sort of course related to the comments and all. Uh, all right, thank you for that. Uh, so are you recommending to take certifications as sometimes it might not give the right knowledge? Uh, so it's like this, guys. Um, what I'm asking you to is like uh, learn the things and then get certified. So I have seen people who are working only towards the certification. So if you take uh, many certifications, there are dumps that people you could uh, that, that people could use and uh, just get through the exam without having the correct knowledge. So um, getting certified is not hard. It's not hard at, hard at all. But uh, when you get, I mean, the real test will be when you are working with people because there'll be several standards set upon you because you have that certification. So if you fail to deliver, so this bad reputation will be on your name. So what I'm asking you to is learn, then get certified. Learning to get certified is not something uh, I would recommend. Yeah, um, yeah, there's another question. How to fit a final year project for a better job? Yeah. So uh, that is something uh, I get a lot. 
So what I tell is like, there are trending technologies like uh, when we were in university and uh, before us also people were telling that uh, cloud is the future. And uh, what I would say is cloud is not the future anymore. It's the present and more sort of uh, now, if you don't know cloud, when you are going to a company, so you'll be considered as one of the ancestors they had. So it's better to learn one of the cloud providers and to uh, have your solution uh, more cloud oriented and uh, try to have this uh, modern language and frameworks integrated, like you can have a good front end on uh, Angular, Java, or uh, Angular, uh, React, or uh, Vue.js, and uh, backend on Node, uh, there's Golang, which is trending, and you can have uh, .NET and Java-based backends also. So your idea doesn't matter actually, what I think, because that you can think related to your um, objective and your research interests as well. But what uh, I mean, as a company, what I could say is it's better to have your uh, technology stack uh, to be the most latest one and to be trending one. And uh, we have seen uh, people using these uh, new um, levels of AIs in their final year projects and um, machine learning technologies and uh, data mining level projects. So those are really good that which will give, which will give you the uh, higher recognition when it comes to an interview. Because still we see people who are doing inventory management as the final year project. So that is something you could avoid. Always discuss with your lecturers and try to get a good research idea. Then technology, you can uh, stick to one of the best technology stacks or the latest ones. Because in certain technologies, you can uh, you are limited to certain boundaries. So what I'm recommending you is, is to have a good uh, research idea finalized, then look for the stack. So if you are working with machine learning like project, I think Python would be the best way to go. And uh, if you take more sort of uh, uh, not data related high processing and more like client level projects, I think the JavaScript based backend would be better. So something like that. It has to be based on your uh, project ideas. So we have uh, quite a few questions. Is it okay with you to answer them? Like are you yeah. busy? Okay. Uh, are there any online platforms to engage on software projects to practice? Uh, so there are um, online learning sites which will give you tests and um, code level things. And um, I think uh, most of you might have heard of uh, Google Summer of Code, where you can um, intern, uh, be, where you can work on a project and get paid also. So search for that, uh, Google Summer of Code. And um, many companies, I can't point and tell you like uh, to ask from them, but there are certain opportunities which they give for universities uh, for university teams to work on that with the uh, industry level supervisor and to get an idea. And also, you don't have to uh, look for a place or a person. What you can do is you can think of an idea and start developing. Then when you get a problem or, a, or an issue that related to uh, maybe a framework or related to something you're doing. So I think it's best to go through Stack Overflow so they will give you the correct answers most of the times. Even um, us developers, senior developers, even architects, they go refer uh, Stack Overflow and try to answer solution, answer questions and also to get solution, which are really important. And also you could post a um, code in GitHub as a public repo and ask people to contribute and to give your give feedbacks. So that is also trending. And also for related uh, framework level matters, you can create issues and ask from the developers of the framework itself. So GitHub, Stack Overflow, and different uh, platforms. And um, don't wait for someone to give you a project. You can start something as a pet project. 
that you can even have referred in your uh, CVs as well, so that uh, you can just go and tell that I didn't get much of work from my university so that I could have uh, more practice. So you can instead go and tell them this, uh, I worked on these projects at my, as my side projects. So these are the links and these are hosted and I received good comments on uh, GitHub also. Likewise, you can show off them. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you think of working for foreign remote startup companies? Yep. So uh, this is something I would have uh, instructed not to back in the days because uh, there were physical offices. I would like for an intern to have the physical contact or physical uh, presence in an office. But nowadays, most of the interns throughout the internship also don't get a chance to work with the company uh, people because most of the companies are now working remote. But uh, I think uh, it's up to you if you take a startup. I mean, the developers are well paid. They are like um, more work oriented, which is good. But if you take an established company, the uh, sometimes, I'm not telling every time, sometimes the work may be a bit slow and you won't get to work uh, in the areas as much as you expect. And uh, there'll be several shortcomings, but it's more structured and you will learn the process really well. In a startup, you'll be more dynamic. So both have pros and cons. I um, just can't point and tell you whether to work for a remote company or a Sri Lankan company or a startup or an established company. That's up to you. So. Each of the companies have their pros and cons well-defined. So I think it's up to you. So if you work for a remote company, uh, which is not based in Sri Lanka, so you will get opportunities to work with different people, different stacks, and um, maybe to get a really good salary as a fresher. But there'll be several shortcomings as well. So if you are ready to accept those, I think you can uh, go on and take it. Um, so, when it comes to networking, would you choose LinkedIn over Twitter? Uh, I can't specifically answer this question because I'm not much of a Twitter user. I only follow people and read things. I don't often post things. So I have seen uh, people um, tweeting a lot and has a good audience also. And um, I'll, I'll give you an example, like um, there was a team from uh, Microsoft DevOps uh, community. I mean, they were called as uh, DevOps advocate, if I could remember correctly. So they used to answer all the questions which are uh, hashtag do, uh, sent to them, uh, related to DevOps and all. And people use these spades to gain some technical audience as well to build up a profile. And on LinkedIn also other side, like uh, you can now uh, have this follower mode if you are creating content. If you are not, you can uh, still be on the basic level and have a good uh, LinkedIn level rating. And um, so to give you a bit of an insight, I'm not much of a Twitter use, but I'm active on LinkedIn. So I actually get around uh, four or five job workers a week if you are after that and uh, a good reaction level is there and I'm um, like uh, having more than uh, 5,000 contacts. So I haven't felt any different that I'm not on Twitter and I don't get any opportunities. So I think LinkedIn is also a good platform and uh, Twitter is also good. I've seen um, many people grow up and uh, become really good uh, Twitter users. I mean like Twitter influencer level one. So you can't choose one over the other. It's better if you can have both. All right, thank you for that. So another one, do we want to learn data science to enter the industry as a software engineer? Uh, if you're targeting a specific company, if you have a specific company in mind and they only look for uh, data science engineers, I would say yes. But in general, 
in freshers level we don't uh, go and uh, bash them and ask like uh, what's your understanding and knowledge on data science i mean touching upon everything is really good but you don't have to be a master on data science to become a become an intern and become a software engineer so uh, i think now there's a uh, level and there are certain degrees also only related to data science so what i think is in the future that will be related to that in software engineers uh, we don't specifically look for data uh, level understanding but it better if you have some knowledge so i'm not uh, asking you not to i mean i'm not asking you uh, not to learn but to have the understanding but it's not a must so having good understanding on uh, software basics and other things will be more than enough to get into the industry as software engineer All right, the next question, what kind of areas should we focus on during an internship to go forward in the software engineering career? What advice would you give to students who have already started internships? Yeah, so I think I uh, touched upon uh, basics there. So what I want to tell them is uh, don't learn languages or technologies. Be more focused on engineering and electrical thinking because if you are in such a company, you won't be bounded to a single tech stack. It might be changed from um, time to time. You'll be working with different domains and different people. So be like water. Take the shape of the container which you are put into. Don't try to be a solid. So have your mind open to learn new things and do not displace anything that you don't know. Try to learn that. and. Uh, as I said earlier, learn engineering, not technologies, because technologies, they may be obsolete within one to two years, but engineering does not. So learn the basics and um, have a good set of soft skills, as I mentioned, so that would be uh, better to become a better software engineer in the future and to have a good career path future in your future. Uh, so, yeah, so another question, if you are willing to take a student as an intern, what are the skills you would expect from such a person? Yeah, for me, I will uh, be looking into uh, three things mainly, uh, attitude and uh, learnability and the passion. So uh, passion, I mean, empathy also. So I would test for these, regardless of, uh, as I told you in my slide deck also, regardless of how technical you are, if you don't have the correct attitude and the passion towards what you're doing. So I think none of the companies will pick that person unless they want just a coder who want to code cut and do things. Because as engineers, we should be analytical and we should be passionate of what we're doing. So that's the best advice I would give to someone who want to pursue and have a good career ahead. All right, uh, so another question. How is a professional qualification considered in the IT industry like BCS qualification? Yeah, it's considered as a degree level qualification because we have few uh, interns and even software engineers who only had BCS. So this is uh, just now there's a standard that you need to have a degree to become a software engineer. But I think in the near future, that will be gone also because a paper, a piece of paper won't be able to decide how good you are, your skill and your mindset and your attitude will. So be always focused and passionate about what you're doing. The opportunities will come to you. And if a com I mean, I, it's, I don't think uh, telling this to you would be a bad thing. If someone is asking you to have a specific qualification, a paper qualification to get a job, if, if, if I were you, I wouldn't go to that place because I want to be tested and treated for who I am. And uh, I want to be treated and tested for my passion, not for the paper qualification. So be passionate on what you're doing. Uh, yeah, and to answer this, yes, it's called, considered as a degree level uh, qualification. 
even BIT as well. So we have uh, interns and developers who only had bit yeah. All right, uh, so next, next question. What are the industry opportunities available in machine learning and AI related fields? Yeah. So uh, in few companies, there are a specific uh, opportunity called uh, machine learning internship. Not sure about AI, but uh, machine learning internships. But uh, when you go to a go to an interview, like uh, even for in uh, internship, so you'll be tested for basics first, and uh, you could ask. I mean, uh, in an interview, the last part would be for your questions towards them. You can specifically ask whether you have any questions like this, and uh, can I get assigned to what? Because uh, at nine time x. Uh, we had uh, one project which was using uh, ML AI level things, and uh, we had some uh, blockchain projects also, where many of the interns got the chance to work with. That is one of the trending ones, block blockchain. So uh, likewise, and uh, at the moment, I don't think that uh, specific companies are uh, there related to ML and AI who are um, recruiting in a massive scale, but each company has a little bit of area which will to a research level interns where you could uh, find a specific opportunity. I'm not telling it's uh, interest and exit, but it's uh, it's it's a bit hard to uh, point and tell. I think every company has a research level uh, internship opportunities where you could get uh, yourself enrolled into. All right, so the next question is Python like Django used in backend in the industry? Uh, at 99X, we don't uh, have much of projects, but I know companies who are using that. So I would say, yes, it is. And um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating, it, so repeating this over and over again. If you are good with Django, don't only just be confident in Django, learn programming and learn uh, software engineering. Then only you can learn other things as well when the chance is given. So uh, we'll say if you're only confident in Django, but if uh, Django announces end of life, I mean, if they, what if that obsolete, if you can't find a single job, how will you survive? So better that you learn and uh, master it because there are opportunities, but uh, be more open-minded. Uh, so what are the qualifications to become a cyber security engineer? Yep. Uh, so this is something without away from my uh, expertise, but uh, I think there's an organization called ISC Squad. It's like, uh, you can type it uh, within brackets, ISC, then Squad. So they have a few certifications. I think they were doing that. And uh, related to OWASP, OWASP or Yeah, OWASP, there are a few certifications related to that uh, in Sri Lanka. I can't remember the specific uh, institute, but this IEC squad one was good, I think. And um, in Microsoft level also, there are a few uh, security level uh, certifications and uh, they taught content. So I think uh, you can search on these areas. And uh, guys, I think uh, I have given you my email address also. So these specific areas, which I can't answer, you can write me a mail. I will uh, try to talk to all my friends who are in these industries and get you uh, more information of these.
sorry. Can you guys see my email here? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so you can uh, write to me. Then I'll uh, get this, try to get this answered. So things like this. So we have some more questions. Is it okay with you? Um, should we move forward? Yeah, we can move forward. No, I mean, like, uh, I can answer those if you ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell some reliable resources in software engineering for the fresher to follow? Yeah, so I think I uh, mentioned them in my last slide. You can go through these uh, sites and refer to their content. Let me share that again. Put uh, learn and uh, LinkedIn learning is also there. It's also really good. And uh, I think LinkedIn Academy is now connected to this, and you can find uh, an academy. Uh, also, there's It's channel nine. Microsoft had uh, Microsoft learn things related to that, and also uh, guys refer to this roadmap message as I told, because from there you could uh, build up a path, and they will give you required resources to build your knowledge on top of uh, what you want to learn. So uh, that is really good. This roadmap message, I think everyone should go there and see uh, how to build your dream career path there. Uh, all right, so the next question we have is, what programming language do you recommend to learn from basic to advanced as a beginner? Mm, that's a tough question. As I come from uh, .NET background, I would say uh, learning .NET would be good, but uh, Java, Node, so uh, as, uh, and Python. So these are the backend languages, which are really good. So if you can learn one of these and master uh, engineering, that could be better. And um, having an understanding on either Node, either uh, .NET or Java would be better. And also learning uh, Node along with uh, one from those would be really uh, good so that you know the spectrum. And as front end, as I told, uh, learning one would be enough and learn how the language works, learn the uh, life cycle method, like uh, if you take React, there's a different life cycle. And um, if you take Angular, the life cycle is different. So likewise, learn these also and learn the basics and learn how it works. So that would be the ideal way. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh... The next question we have is, could you please give some tips to face a technical interview for a software engineering internship? Mm. Yes, I think so having the basics ready and um, 
I think uh, what we do in an interview is we first basically uh, go through the CV and we try to uh, build up a discussion with that uh, person we are interviewing uh, to gain the technical understanding on what he or she has done. So what I'm asking you is if you are mentioning a specific project in your CV, try to have the best projects as the uh, top ones and uh, you can uh, have least prioritized one in the bottom. So what we will do is we will try to build up a discussion on top of the things that you have done and we'll try to uh, assess your knowledge and how you have applied the theories that you learned in your development. So it's not to uh, measure you, uh, have you done good, whether it's uh, working perfectly and you learn something out of that. I mean, sometimes I even come across interns who had earned a lot from a, a specific software project, but yet I'm not happy with them because they haven't learned the basics. The system is working, it's everything is there, but we haven't learned the basics. So what we will do is we'll try to build up a discussion on top of that, and we'll try to uh, question them for basic WOP uh, related things and uh, few uh, framework level things, whether you have used uh, Java or .NET or likewise, we'll be accessing them as well. And we'll be doing this uh, attitude and uh, empathy level, then uh, passion level tests through the discussion. So uh, throughout my presentation, I think uh, I gave you a few tips so you could uh, refer to that presentation and be more confident on those areas. All right, thank you for that. Uh, another question we have is, which platforms are mostly used in mobile development such as React Native Flutter? Yeah. So, uh, Earlier, these were like uh, not very much uh, native one. So now the most trending one is React Native, according to my understanding. And uh, Flutter is something new, but it's really picking up. So we see a good Flutter community also. I think uh, having good understanding on these two would be uh, really good. And stick to a single one. I'm again asking, you don't have to learn both learn one and master it so they are because i can't pick one over the other and also uh, just a small tip if you are coming from a dotnet background you can use savory that is also good for uh, native mobile app development and you can work on those so with the time limitations we've been having i think we answered almost all the questions we had today Thank you very much all for directing the qu directing questions. A kind request from you all. We will be circulating a feedback form in the chat box. So feel free to give your comments and feedbacks regarding today's program. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Johan Gunatilaka for accepting our honorable invitation today. Please accept this digital token of appreciation. Thank you, guys. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Thank you once again. Now I invite all our participants to switch on your cameras to take a quick photo as a memorial.
so everyone uh, in count of 3 say cheers Three, two, one. Say cheese. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So without taking much time, I now invite the Vice Chair of StudPro 5.0, Mr. Subodh Hiranga, to deliver the vote of thanks. So I think uh, we can't hear you. Uh, sorry, my mic was mute. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is an honor for me to be asked to propose a vote of thanks on the occasion of this session. Uh, first and foremost, on behalf of the Stud Pro 5.0 committee, I would like to thank Mr. Johan Gunatilaka for a brilliant session on today's topic. It was very informative and I hope everyone uh, took advantage of the opportunity. I would also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to everyone on uh, IEEE Young Professional Sri Lanka team uh, for engaging in and supporting us on this occasion. Uh, finally, a big thank to our wonderful audience uh, for joining us today. I hope this uh, adds value to your journey ahead. So thank you everyone once again. Uh, have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Subodhan. By and by, we have come to the end of this unique session that explored the importance of knowing our industry for the computing stream. With the hope to see you guys in another informative session, I now sign off from today's proceedings. Thank you very much. Stay safe and have a good day.